uh, talk as legacy admin. So thank you guys for coming. Um, I know you had many other options. Uh, so thanks for coming to this uh, talk. And I hope it'll be informative. And it's about InspectDB, uh, which is a Django uh, command uh, that helps you uh, reverse engineer a model from an existing database. Um, once again, my name is Victor Christopher Cabral, but I go by my initial name, Chris. Um, when I was practicing this, I ran a little long, so I'm going to speak kind of fast to try and get as much information in as I can. Um, this is me. Uh, there's professional Chris and then uh, regular Chris. So uh, if you want to come talk to me afterwards, uh, you know, you'll talk to uh, regular Chris, not professional Chris. But right now, it's a professional Chris. Um, so some themes for the talk that I wanted to uh, give are don't write, don't write code unless you have to. And my name is Chris, not Victor. That'll come up. And if, you do some, if you're doing something hard with Django, then you're probably doing it wrong. Um, and this uh, is something I realized when I started using Django initially. Um, when, I, uh, when I created a custom command to populate initial data, and then I realized that there were fixtures. Um, so this happens a lot when you, like, when you start to work on something, you don't read all the documentation, or you see some cool part of it that you want to do and don't realize that there's other things. Um, so my advice is you know, to spend a, you know, come to DjangoCon, um, go, um, go on IRC, um, go on forums, and there's a lot of rich information. There's slash r slash Django. Um, so it's, and there's a lot of like, custom apps, uh, templates, and they all have like, their suggested ways of doing things. So InspectDB is one way that you save a lot of time um, if you're looking, working with a legacy system. So InspectDB reads tables and columns, not rows, in our database and produces a model.py to standard out. Uh, so you don't have to manually write this code. Uh, and you could. You could uh, you know, create a class uh, that inherits from model.model .model and give it an explicit TB uh, TV like name. Um, and you could go through every uh, table in your database uh, but this just jump starts the process for you. And it's not perfect, so we'll go over why, uh, what, what will you have to do afterwards. But it works pretty well. And when would you need this? Um, and two scenarios have come up when I've needed this. I needed a, I had a legacy, legacy system, a legacy database, and I just wanted an admin interface to it. Uh, so foreign keys are great. Uh, you know, primary key constraints are great. There's you know, all these constraints that MySQL comes with. But in reality, if you have like an additional uh, validation layer to a legacy system that you want to keep in a clean state, you can you know, reverse engineer a model, add a couple of validations, and you'll have this slick admin interface uh, that Django comes with for free. Uh, and the other use case that I've come up with is uh, creating management commands. Uh, so when you create management commands for going through a bunch of rows uh, in a database and making sure that one field is less than another field, or you want to find all uh, rows that have you know, a certain value, the ORM comes in handy for, to, for doing these things. And writing custom SQL is sometimes hard, um, particularly if like, you know, it's, not, it's not designed to be a programming language. It's designed to do specific things in SQL. So that's another reason why uh, this has come in handy in the past. So I've kind of created a fictitious scenario of why, um, why I'm doing this uh, demo. And I have a legacy system with a legacy database. And I can't touch the code for whatever reason. Um, and I need to be able to manipulate the data, but still keep it in a clean state. Um, so why can't you edit the source? Um, there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't be able to edit the source. You, have, you don't have the source. Uh, it's a third-party product. It's written in Rails. Or um, you know, the source is written so poorly, it's impossible to understand. <laughs> Uh, so at the end of this uh, demo, I want, I want to be able to have an admin interface that, uh, with as little work as possible, I want to be able to have my basic CRUD operations, and I want to be able to leave the existing database intact, more or less. And we'll talk about how we break that and when we have to break that, um, and ways, different ways to get around it. But I more or less want that legacy system that's interacting with this code to, to be the same after this. Uh, so... The, straight from the docs, uh, inspect database, in, introspects the database, uh, and whatever's pointed. So uh, the first thing you'll notice here is that um, whatever your settings uh, name is pointed to, that's what it's going to introspect. Um, and it's also, and this, sta this statement doesn't seem like it says a lot, but it actually says a lot. The script will inspect the database and create a model for each table. Um, so something that you don't think about uh, is that you'll often have more tables than models because of many-to-many -many relationships. And introspect, uh, introspection doesn't, doesn't understand that concept. Uh, 
And also, the most important part of this is this feature is meant to be a shortcut, not as definitive model generation. So I, I created a fictitious model. So it's pretty basic. There's a user table. Uh, and I made a lot of like egregious errors. Don't blame me. I designed this to be terrible on purpose so that we could understand what would happen if you designed a database that's terrible. Because uh, you have to work with databases that are terrible. And when you're introspecting them, they're not going to be perfect. Uh, so I have a user table. It has one primary key. It's auto-incremented. It's not null. And it has a username. And then, of course, it has a plain text password field. Uh, we have a company table, uh, has one uh, primary key, it's auto-incremented, it's got a name, and it's self-referential. So a company can have a parent company. Um, so it's interesting, corner case. And then this is what I was talking about before. A user can belong to many companies, and, many com and a company can have many users, and they're related by this user has company, uh, uh, many-to-many table. So this relationship, in, in, if it were in Django, you'd have a user model that has a many-to-many -many relationship with a company or vice versa. But there's really no way of, a, a, like, of Django introspection to know this. So we're going to see how, what this actually produces in a second. Uh, and another thing that's terrible about this, for, in terms of Django at least, uh, is that it has two primary keys. So it has composite primary keys, which is going to be a problem for us, and we'll see why. Uh, but Django basically assumes that you have every single model. It assumes that you have one ID field that has a uh, primary key. Uh, and this is, doesn't fit that pattern. And then profile, uh, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, has a triple uh, composite key. And there's a role here. So role is meant to be a foreign key to this table role. But this is a var car. And uh, the name here is supposed to match the role in here. So it's like completely worst database design you can imagine. There can be so many problems with this. Absurd anomalies, deletion anomalies, like you name it. So that's, that's my shitty model. And then just for fun, if we have time at the end, I'm going to go over this table because I created like the worst uh, field names possible just to see what they would produce. Um, so the source of InspectDB, um, this is the source. Uh, can you, it's good size. Uh, okay, so the, there's two primary loops. The first loop uh, uses connection.introspection table names. Uh, so connection.introspection is a, a connection-specific introspection function to get the table names. So depending on what database you're using, it'll, get, it'll use a different command to get back that list of table names. But then once it has that list of table names, um, it's agnostic. This code, uh, uh, the rest of this code is agnostic to the type of database you have. So I looked at the source code for uh, the different uh, introspection definitions. So MySQL, Oracle, and Postgres all have them. And if you look at the documentation, it says MySQL and Postgres are uh, pretty, like, supposed to be first-class citizens. And Oracle has, like, the same uh, function, introspection functions, methods defined to introspect a database. So I didn't get a chance to test uh, Oracle, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. And I was looking online, and it seems like a lot of people have gotten to work. So uh, maybe I can look up that later, and we can talk about that. But... So once you get a table name uh, at that first primary loop, the secondary part of the loop, uh, or inside that loop, uh, gets the relationships, gets the indexes, and then it has a secondary loop that loops through all the uh, columns. And at the end of this, I know I didn't like do a good job of um, this screenshot, but at the end of this, it generates a, or like it yields a uh, output uh, to the, it yields an output of the column name to uh, standard out. So that's what we're going to use now. So this was a little quiz I made. Uh, these are the introspection specific commands that my C or, sorry, that Django uses uh, to get the table names. So my SQL is just show tables, uh, select tables for Oracle. And something you'll notice about these is each of these commands is not guaranteed to come in any particular order. So show tables just gives you a list of the tables. Um, it doesn't give you a list of the tables sorted by you know, when they were created. It doesn't give you a list of the tables sorted by uh, the name. And all of these are the same. So when it goes through that loop, it's basically going to get, uh, there's just no way to guarantee what order it's in. Um, so this is what we talked about before. The, we use the connection introspection uh, to get the table names, the relationships, and the indexes, and the columns. But then we're kind of agnostic at that next layer to generate the models once we have all that information from our um, from a connection. And this is the many-to-many -many fail. Um, like I said, 
this should map with a many-to-many -many, uh, on either the user or the company field, depending. Uh, but this maps as three individual models. Um, so let's take a look at what would happen if we did this. So python manage.py db shell. So I created this in MySQL, so we'll take a look at this in MySQL. So these are the six tables we started with, and we haven't synced our database, so we don't have any of the Django-specific um, tables. So the question is, do we want to sync our database or do database introspection first? So database introspection looks at the database and creates a model from it. SyncDB creates or syncs our database uh, to the correct point uh, that we're at right now or whatever we have in the t in, in, uh, right now. So if we run our sync database first, we're going to create tables that um, Django needs to you know, run, uh, to log in and, uh, and to hold our users. But then if we run inspect database after that, those tables will also be in our database and they will be introspected as well. And that's not really what we want because those, are our, those models are already defined somewhere else. So we're going to run uh, inspect db first. So like I said, it goes directly to standard out, um, which is not very useful, but you can take a look at it. Um, so it tells you what to do. Um, so which is nice, so I don't have to be here giving you a talk. You can just read this. You rearrange the, the models. You make sure that everything, everyone has a primary key. And if you want, you can remove managed false. Um, it doesn't really say what that's going to do, besides it's going to allow uh, Django to have a life cycle. And you're allowed to rename the models, but you're not allowed to rename the DB tables, which is like the meta option to explicitly state what the table name is to override the convention. Um, and then there's this line, which you know I'm sure it won't be important. Uh, you'll have to insert the output of Django admin SQL custom uh, app name into your database, whatever that is. All right, so let's go ahead and put this to. So I created an app for this. <coughs> and let's see what we produce. This is the same thing, but we're just in a file now. Um, and now we can run our sync DB. So the first problem that we're going to run into is a uh, related name collision. So let's add a related name to one of the uh, namespace collisions. Let's see, related name. So looking at our model, um, user has company user user. And by the way, like my SQL admin generated these field names, so I'm sorry that they're terrible. And I was too lazy to change them. But it has two foreign keys to user has company. And the problem with that uh, is that the namespace will conflict. So the, the accessors to get the results set uh, will be uh, will be the same when it auto-generates it. So added related name to one of them. And now let's try and sync DB. Okay, so we can sync our database now. Uh, so all we had to do was add a related name, and it told us to do that, so that was easy enough. Here's my email if you want to send me something. All right, so we've synced, uh, we have uh, ran our sync database, and now we can run our server. So it worked now. Um, it's running. So let's go to the admin. Let's log in. So I added something to auto-register all the models um, so we can look at them right away. We can look at our company and create a new company. So this is weird. There's a company ID. And I normally don't have to enter in my own primary keys. Uh, so let's look at what went wrong. And this is a common thing. Um, the integer field has a primary key, but it's an auto field. And I know that it's an auto field because I created the data model, and company has auto increment, but I can somehow edit the auto incremented value, which doesn't really make sense. So to fix this, we can add an auto field. Let's come back. All right, so that field disappears, and now it'll be auto incremented in the background. And I'm going to create a company in my schedule. I'm going to save it. Uh, just because that annoys me. Um, sorry for my use of lambdas. Now let's add a user. 
also very annoying. So username is going to be Chris, and my password is going to be password is taco. OK, so those were like the two easy tables to map. They had one primary key. They were auto-incremented. It, mess, it messed up on identifying that it's an auto-increment field, but that was easy enough to fix. And even if we didn't, we could just enter a value there. Uh, the next thing that's going to come up is these composite primary keys. So we don't have a primary key listed here. So there's multiple ways to approach this. Um, so related name, we talked about that. Do I normally have to add my primary keys? No. Uh, so Django hates com primary key, uh, composite primary keys. Uh, so there's a way to fix this. You can drop the primary keys and keep the foreign key constraints. And you can add a new field called ID. And Django's uh, like model assumes that there's an ID field anyways. And you can make that not null primary key and auto increment. So you're adding this uh, extra uh, field to each table that uh, has a composite key, and you're just reducing that composite key to this extra field now. So I did not memorize how to do that, so <laughs> let's drop into the DB shell. So I, for the two tables that have composite keys, I'm adding a column ID int primary key auto increment. And before I did that, I dropped the primary keys that already existed, which were those composite primary keys. And I'm trying to do this quickly. And for the other table for this user has company, which is the same thing, uh, there was some MySQL uh, bug that I had to uh, get around by dropping the foreign keys. So I can re-enable those afterwards, but for the purpose of this demo, it doesn't need to be. Okay, so I have a company, I have a user, and now I want to put that user in that company with that many-to-many -many relationship. I'll save it, come back, and I'm going to create a role, and I know I want this role to be uh, worker B. Now, inside of my uh, profile, if I want to create a new profile, I'm going to give it an ID, and it's going to be worker B but I'm going to misspell B. So we wanted this role uh, to be consistent with the roles table, even though there's not a foreign key relationship. And it's not going to allow us to do that right now, because there's no validation on the role field. So that's not good. So we're going to check and see what we can do about that. So in our profiles, I'm going to add a validation to ensure that that happens. And I'm going to borrow most of this from here. Got to raise validation error. Import role. Um, So we're going to import validation error, we're going to import our roles, and if the uh, text for the profile role does not match something that we have in our value list for the names, uh, then we will raise a validation error. Role not bound. So we have one profile that's in a bad state. I'm going to add another one uh, that's supposedly in a good state. Worker B. So worker B, at first I'm going to misspell it. So worker B is now being validated, and it says role is not found, so we can update it uh, if we change it back to worker B, which is in our roles table. So that's a basic way to do validation. If something's messed up, you can still, you know, in Python, run some type of check. Uh, Okay, and I also created a management command uh, to kind of demonstrate what you could do. Uh, you know, this management command isn't specific to running 
uh, a website. So if you just wanted to find all the places where you're interacting with your database, run a piece of code on it in Python, and, in, and find all the places where that role relationship is messed up, you can do that without, um, thanks, do not purchase. And it's called post sync. So I added my post sync, it has a handle, it tries to find bad apples, it lets you know it's doing it. Uh, it looks at all the profiles, and for every profile, it makes sure the role is uh, in the uh, name. So it found one bad apple, and the primary key was one. Okay. So these are the two paths I talked about. Uh, so this is the one path I talked about. You can remove the primary key, add a new field named ID, and make that the primary key, and create auto increment field. Um, and the other path that I didn't specify uh, was that you can actually create a view and then change the DB table name to look at that view and then create a primary key in that view, but then it messes up your updates and inserts. Uh, so uh, path one is what I took. And there's other ways to do this too. There's a Django app that does composite keys. I haven't tried it out, so if you guys wanna take a look at that and let me know. Um, so if we run inspect DB again, what's gonna happen? Uh, it's gonna generate models for all the stuff that we've already generated, and it's also gonna overwrite all the code we've written. So this is only meant to be a uh, one-time thing. So if you run inspect DB after sync DB, inspect creates models for my built-in Django models. All right, so another question, uh, and this is a trick question, so if anyone wants to brave it, uh, let me know. What will happen if I give this code to another developer? Does anyone know? Or anyone think they know? Okay, so uh, we have managed set to false right now. So Django won't create those tables because it's unmanaged. So if we gave this, uh, so the answer is it depends. If they have a database that doesn't have those tables, uh, then it's not gonna create them for them, and they're gonna kind of think like, what's going on here? Um, and if they have a database that has those tables, uh, then things will work more or less. Uh, so that's part of that SQL custom uh, command. You can, if you need to give this database to somebody else and you want to create those uh, files, or if you, give, if you wanna take out the managed part, or sorry, the manage equals false part, uh, which, uh, before we keep talking about that, I should show you. Um, this meta option, managed equals false. So if you want to take out that managed equals false, then the default value is managed equals true. So if you gave this to somebody else and you took all those out and you ran a sync DB, for that next person, it would create these tables. Um, and I wanted to do one last thing at the head time. Oh, well, actually, you know what? And just for fun, uh, is this table I created. And as we know, every table gets mapped to a model and every column gets mapped to a field in Python. But what if the fields uh, would conflict or what if they would create things that are nonsensical in Django? Uh, for example, the field name pass, which is a var car. Pass is a keyword in Python. Uh, so what's gonna happen? Um, underscore underscore is gonna conflict with following uh, foreign key relationships. So let's just take a look at what it does, just for fun. Uh, just for fun, the fields get added, like this underscore field gets added, and then since both of these, the underscores get uh, removed from the next field, even though it has two underscores, and then the one underscore field gets removed, and then they just keep on adding these numbers to it so that none of the namespaces conflict. Uh, then there, the number 12 as a MySQL column name is also invalid identifier in Python because it's just a number. So number underscore 12 gets added. Uh, and I think I'm out of time. Uh, either of time or no questions. Yeah. Sure. So don't write code unless you have to. My name is Chris, not Victor. Come say hi. I'm a pretty friendly guy. And if you're doing something with Django uh, that's hard, you're probably doing it wrong. So anybody have any questions?